Scientists grow Tasmanian tiger in artificial womb halfway through pregnancy. Okay, I saw this headline and I was really excited, but this is from the same people who made the dire wolves, and when I looked into it, it's extraordinarily suspicious. Tasmanian wolves, tigers, or otherwise known as thylacines, went totally extinct around 1936, although they were gone in the wild in 1920. It wasn't until 1936 that the Australian government decided to put any protections on them at all. Of course, that was very much too late. I saw a lot of claims about this, including donating $1.5 million to the Weiss Institute at Harvard. Before we get too much into this, what this sounds like to me is an organization that has a decent amount of money that's laying themselves adjacent to really well-respected institutions in order to get credibility. That does not equal credibility. Now, when I actually went to Colossus's website at all, they told a bit of a different story. Yes, they are studying artificial womb technology, and that could be really great for reproductive medicine and helping premature babies make it to adulthood. But they have made it clear that they are not working towards reproductive medicine at all. They also made some dubious claims that haven't been peer-reviewed to my knowledge, that they had sequenced and assembled the complete genome of a thylacine. That one is not surprising. I was actually a little bit surprised that people were doubtful that happened. They've altered the genome of a tiny little mouse-like marsupial to resemble that of a thylacine's. Evidently, they did use an artificial womb technology, although I am not seeing the peer-reviewed paper on it. They also say, or IVF for a surrogate Dunnart mother. But I have seen in the news stories that they claimed that they had made it halfway through gestation, which is not super surprising because marsupials do not have very long gestation periods to begin with. I am more deeply confused about the idea of taking a Dunnart to host a thylacine. If they really are just altering their genes to make them look more like that guy, I, I guess that would be in line with what they did with the dire wolves. This to me sounded a little bit more out of pocket than it actually was, supposedly. Dunnarts may be tiny, but thylacines are born like a grain of rice size, as far as we know. They are also apparently well on their way to cloning elephants in order to give them hair like the woolly mice and make them look more like a mammoth, which to me is pointless. We have no need for mammoths. We have no place for mammoths. While there are some elephants that are doing pretty well, we have a rapidly collapsing ecosystem and bringing back extinct organisms of this kind, what we like to call charismatic megafauna, is not going to help anyone. Things like the dire wolf, which plays off Game of Thrones, or woolly mammoths because they are charismatic. That brings in funding. And while there are many things that Colossal does that sound pretty good on paper, when you really look at it, they are pretty dubious. And yes, woolly mammoths are pretty much the definition of charismatic megafauna. When you really look at what they're doing, it is kind of suspicious. You may, of course, develop your own opinion, but as a scientist, I do not like the way that they are going about this, and I think you'll find a lot of similar opinions in the scientific community. This is not how things are done. Also, I feel weird every time I say the term charismatic megafauna because I have been referred to that a lot. I pretty much have to be the mascot for whatever organization I'm in because I'm the only scientist who's sociable. 